There are many instances that I work with groups or collaborate with uh, other women. I did a, a series called The Jazzling Series where I put ads in um, local newspapers, so The Village Voice in New York and um, a newspaper in a, mag a woman's magazine in Johannesburg where I asked them to contact me to be vajazzled. So to be vajazzled is um, to actually have your pubic region uh, decorated with Swarovski crystals. Um, so they would come to, to my studio and they would choose whether they wanted, you know, how they wanted to present their bodies and then we applied one by one these rhinestones to make images. And what the project was looking at is how the choices women make about their bodies, you know, this, this trend about removing bodily hair, which is actually a trend that's very influenced by the pornography industry. And it was questioning why do we make these choices? Why do we sort of kind of remove our natural beauty and adorn it with something else? Like, is it for us? Is it for someone else? Like, is it a convention that we don't even know why we're making these decisions? So it was, um, it was kind of asking women questions and the actual work was doing it. Uh, they ended up being photographs, but it was more kind of private performance that happened with me and, and the woman and the team that I worked with. And it was about talking and, you know, this kind of very intimate moment between two strangers. And it became a very interesting confessional space. And what was interesting about it is I went in with a very set set of ideas about what I thought it was about. And I ended with a very different idea of what it meant to these women to do this. I started from a very critical position that I felt that like a lot of women were making decisions, uninformed decisions about their bodies and uh, kind of being swept up in these trends, which are actually kind of the ma manipulation of a, of a, a broader industry uh, that kind of preys on a almost sort of vulnerable minority group. And, but then when I found out, when the woman who came to me, I was so surprised by who came to have their, themselves for jazzled. So a lot of women, there was one woman, a Muslim woman who came very religious, who came, didn't want her family to know. So she did it just purely for her. She didn't want anyone to know. She didn't want to show it to anyone. She didn't even really want the photo. She just wanted to do it. And there were women who came because they were very uncomfortable in their bodies and it was almost like a challenge to themselves to kind of make peace with who, th who they were. And you know, the interesting thing is that this is a, an older project. Now, this idea of kind of embracing different body shapes and embracing who you are, I mean, that wasn't the language at the time. So it was, it felt, these women felt very brave coming to do it. I chose to use images like Hello Kitty or, um, you know, kind of the wave, those, that Japanese wave that's kind of on every tattoo that you see now. So these are images that have become kind of mainstream throwaway images, because I think that, you know, things like these vajazzling and tattoos and body markings do become about sort of trends and um, about a moment. You know, it's not a kind of, it's what you feel on the day. So it was almost kind of very quick, responsive uh, drawings as opposed to very kind of considered deep thinking things. So it, they weren't, the, f the first series I did actually said I do on all of them. The, all, all the women's vajazzle said I do, which was again this idea about permission and kind of acknowledge, uh, acknowledgement of what they were doing and what they were being part of. You know, like you say I do to getting married, you also say I do to these, con these social contracts that um, all these companies kind of make with you. I think what I was aiming for initially was to take these photographs and to present them in a way because the way the photographs were taken is that they were front on, they weren't kind of what you call the male gaze, the body weren't, they weren't necessarily iconicized, not nuanced, not sympathetic, uh, hazy light. So it was not the kind of way women are pictured in film or cinema or advertising generally. It was quite, it was quite a frank eye that was looking at it. And um, it was really to just say, to ask people to like, look at this. What is this? Why, 
what does this mean to you? Why are you doing this? But then when we started taking the photographs, you know, they started being very formal photos where they just stood with their hands on their hips. And sort of women started dancing for the camera and sort of swaying their hips and getting into it. And in some ways, you know, I'm, I'm cautious with the use of the word empowerment because I think it's thrown around a lot, but this idea of not having a face was quite liberating for them because it was, it was literally that no one had to know who they were and um, they could kind of be free with their bodies. And so it was quite a lesson for me in terms of what this kind of anonymity, this freedom allowed these women and um, the idea of becoming a performer, you know, that we're not usually allowed to, to be. So it, um, the intention with, of the initial idea was very different to what the outcome was for me. The, the women initially, when um, they took the photos, we agreed that um, it was anonymous and no one had to know about it. But when I had the exhibition, it was amazing how many of them actually went and stood next to their pictures and sort of claimed them. So it was, it was an interesting experience and to see how they also changed their ideas based on seeing these photos and how all of them were so proud of them actually at the end. No one looked at them and thought, oh my God, I look terrible. And the intention wasn't to romanticize the body.